name is Raymond Walls. I'm a board of director uh, with the a member of the board of directors with the Minnesota Veterans Congress, but I'm here at this time to represent the Minnesota Veterans Hall of Fame. The Minnesota Veterans Hall of Fame is a separate nonprofit organization. We get we are funded totally by private donations. We're here tonight to recognize two Minnesota inventors. For you to better understand, I'll explain a little bit more about the background of the Minnesota Inventors. Hall of Fame. The Minnesota Inventors Hall of Fame was, in, was first organized in 1976 by a group of very active supporters of the Minnesota Inventors Congress. They felt that in recognition of the 200th anniversary of our country, in part of the celebration, we should start recognizing our inventors. So they formed the Minnesota Inventors Hall of Fame. It's a counterpart to the National Inventors Hall of Fame. And it's, it's one of only two states who have a Hall of Fame. Now, the other Hall of Fame is in New Jersey. It's sponsored by a college. So we are unique in the fact that we are a state organization, but we're privately funded. The National Inventors Hall of Fame recognizes inventors based on a single accomplishment or single patent. The Minnesota Inventors Congress is different in that we recognize a lifetime of work. Tonight, we're going to induct, induct two inventors, one a deceased inventor, Mr. Bud Froehlich, and one a living inventor, uh, Mr. Richard Thorwood. Our second inductee this evening is Mr. Richard Thorwood. And Mr. Thorwood worked for the Toro Company for 34 years. But his background, if I remember correctly, started out in a collegiate course of study at Augsburg and then at the University of Minnesota with classes in studio art and science and mathematics, cross-discipline. In 1956, he was awarded the degree from the university, majoring in fine arts. After a two-year stint as a photographer, writer with the United States Army Airborne, he was hired as a draftsman at the Studebaker Corporation. His creative nature moved him into engineering at Studebaker, where he conceived, developed, and put into production an entire new line of frost bee refrigerators. In 1966, Thorwood was hired by Toro as a design engineer, where he remained for 34 years. He worked on many product designs and improvements. Some involved product convenience, such as his first major product, the development of the Toro Key Electric Starting System for walk-behind mowers. It's a feature that's still offered on Toro's current walk-behind mowers. One of his last projects at Toro was, a work, was working as part of a development team on the Toro personal pace system that automatically self-propels a walk-behind mower to the operator's walking speed. These features were so unique for their time and so instantly popular that other manufacturers have quickly copied them. His contributions often focused on enhancing product safety and environmental concerns. His pioneering work then included the then unique idea of devising tests to measure the safety of lawnmower designs, following, followed by development of a, of a safer product, the Toro Guardian Walk Behind Mower, mower and then the, the Guardian 2. These included the rear safety shield, foot guard, and the first use of safety labeling in the industry, both of which are now required by law on all mowers. The Guardians also incorporated features to cut down on thrown objects. His work in this area led to the development of industry safety standards for lawn mowers. He created a new mower deck design that significantly improved mulching capabilities. He invented kickers. These are shaped elements placed inside of the mower's cutting chamber to direct the clippings back down into the mower blade for recutting. As a result, grass clippings are now much more effectively recycled back into the ground through mulching rather than being bagged. Mulching has replaced, largely replaced, bagging as the dominant grass cutting practice throughout the nation. He also worked to reduce lawnmower gasoline consumption by developing ways to maintain excellence in grass cutting at slower speeds. Other manufacturers followed and walk behind mowers now run at 3,000 RPM instead of 34,000 RPM, saving millions of barrels of oil and reducing hydrocarbon emissions. And the final project 
I want to talk to you about tonight is the art, his uh, single stage snow throwers. He originated the idea of the curved blades in the snow throwers, which is now common throughout the industry. His invention of the power curve rotor dramatically advanced the performance and commercial viability of single stage snow throwers. By shaping the rotor so that it would show it would throw a tapered or converging column of snow through a tapered chute drastically reducing the frictional losses between the chute and the snow stream. This development has made single-stage snow throwers more efficient at throwing snow, allowing for them to replace many of the more dangerous and more expensive two-stage snow blowers. For these inventions and his lifetime of contributions, he's being inducted in the Minnesota Inventors Hall of Fame this evening. I ask Mr. Dick Thorwood to come to the stand. And I ask him to say I want to thank the uh, Inventors Hall of Fame and its board of directors for honoring me here tonight with this prestigious award. I also want to thank my son Mike for acting as my sponsor of this because if he hadn't done that, this would not be possible. <laughs> and <clears throat> I have several members of my family here tonight. I've got my wife Darlene, I've got my uh, son Mike and his wife Sue, and two of my grandchildren, Sarah and Ben. And um, my parents are also here with me tonight, uh, in spirit at least. And uh, what I really mean is that they're here in a sense that um, I've traced my family tree backwards for many generations. I found that there is a strong gene for technology that comes down through my uh, father's side of the family. And there's a strong gene for art that comes down through my mother's side of the family. And um, by studying the lives of different famous inventors, I found that uh, when these two particular genes come together, there's a strong aptitude for invention. And you can see that in inventors as far back as Leonardo da Vinci. And you can see it in other inventors throughout the ages, right on down to the modern times. I'd like to see how this applies to my family. Um, it applies to me, of course. I've got the genes, and here I am tonight. But it also applies to my son, Mike. Um, it turns out that my son, Mike, is also very talented as an artist. But he also holds a master's degree in, in uh, mechanical engineering. And if you were to go to the patent office in Washington, D.C. and um, look up the name Thorwood, you would find his name on patents there, as well as other members of my Thorwood family. And uh, so you can see that uh, we're a family of inventors. We're cut from the same cloth. And uh, I think it's fitting that I think Mike should share with me in this tonight. And uh, uh, so maybe you could give him a hand. Uh, then there's my grandson, Ben. And it turns out that Ben, too, is very adept in art. And uh, he likes technical things as well. Like, but then you might ask, well, he's got the, the genes for art and technology, but is he an inventor? And the answer is yes. And he invented the handy hammer helper. And uh, he showed it right here at Redwood Falls two years ago and um, as part of the student inventors program, which I think is a wonderful program. And uh, uh, I'm pleased to see all of the kids that uh, are able to be a part of that program. And um, so, so it took me 77 years to make it here, but it only took me years. <laughs> there's, there's my granddaughter, Sarah, and uh, she's 
also very gifted in art and in technology as well. And she's one of a handful of girls that were chosen to attend STEPS, which is an engineering summer camp for girls at, held at the University of St. Thomas. But uh, this year, it turns out that she's one of an even smaller group that was uh, chosen to attend for a second time. And uh, what do you know? She's an, she's an inventor, too. And uh, she's the inventor of the sleep tight zip-on blanket, which won a special prize at her school <coughs> two years ago. Oh. <laughs> And last but not least, we have my wife, Linda Arlene, and uh, <coughs> my daughter-in-law, uh, Sue. And uh, they don't share my parents' genes, of course. But, uh, <laughs> watch for the fact that they're both remarkable women in their own way. So, I think we should give them a hand. <laughs> so uh, thank you again for this wonderful night. sale around town. Uh, it's a fascinating story. You'll find out if you read that. A number of things I didn't mention in the presentation tonight, including the fact that he's got 35 inventions, U.S. inventions, and another, what, 17 foreign patents. Excuse me, patents. 35 U.S. patents and another 17 foreign patents. And he's also displayed at art museums. I'll we'll leave you at that so you can buy the paper and find out the rest of the story. <laughs>